Aloha and welcome to Work Reimagined, streaming live on ThinkTech Hawaii, brought to you from Honolulu, Hawaii. Why do we need to reimagine work? Well, as we know, we're facing massive disruptions to our labor markets due to automation and now the pandemic. On Work Reimagine, I talk to innovators and entrepreneurs who are creating innovative solutions that help us navigate the effects of these disruptions while making a positive social impact in people's lives and in our communities. I'm Ruby Menon, your host, and my guest today is Keahi Selhorst. He's the program director for the Purple Maya Hiapo program. And Purple Maya is actually a nonprofit and Hiapo is kind of sits in that umbrella of services that they offer. And this is a specific special workforce development program that offers free training to learn the Salesforce administrator platform. Did you know the Salesforce ecosystem is predicted to create 3.3 million new jobs worldwide by 2022? Well, now you know. Salesforce is the hot new career path for those that are in a career transition or looking to reskill. The HIAPO program's vision is to create a new generation of skilled tech workers from often overlooked segments of our community and provide them with better career opportunities, training, and ultimately economic growth. I'll be talking to Kiahi about the HIAPO program and the organization's mission to provide career training in Salesforce. Kiahi, I'm so excited to have you on the show. And full disclosure, as you know, I'm one of your students. Uh, I'm enrolled in the HIAPO program to learn Salesforce. And in my opinion, HIAPO is a model for workforce development programs that could be emulated nationwide to help people reskill into high demand tech career. So Kiahi, aloha and welcome. Aloha, thank you for having me. I really appreciate your time. Well, it's great to have you because um, I think that this is the best kept secret in Hawaii right now and uh, happy to, to try to, you know, get the, the word out. Um, so I'd love to, to just dive in and learn a little bit more um, about you, actually, and what your career path trajectory was. How did you actually wind up being the program director for the Yapo program? Wow. Okay. That's a great question. Um... So I've always been a non-traditional student. Uh, very early, even in high school, uh, early college, I had professors asking if I wanted to get into computer science. And at the time, uh, I'm a bit older. Uh, that was The answer to that was absolutely not. I'm going to be a lifeguard in Hawaii. And so um, I never wanted to be in front of a computer for 8 to 12 hours a day. Uh, I studied finance at University of Hawaii. I got into radio. Uh, that doesn't pay very well. So I got into banking, which made more sense. And at the bank, I sat in front of a computer for eight to 12 hours every single day. So exactly the job that I was trying to avoid, I landed it. And I thought, you know, um, I've always been good at computer science and programming. Why don't I try to relearn those skills? And so I, I did, and I quit banking, and I jumped in and uh, went back to school learned some things, ended up at Dev League Boot Camp, where I graduated in um, about five, six years now. And that uh, took me to Blue Startups, where I created, uh, with, with some help, of course, created a company that uh, tried to break out. And that's where I met uh, Donovan K. Aloha, who is the founder, one of the founders of Purple Maya. And he heard that I was homeschooling my child at the time and asked if I could add some students. And then we added several schools. <laughs> so yeah. I've been there quite a, yeah, I've been there quite a long time uh, teaching different things, web development, uh, video game development. We still have a very strong youth program for tech education and training. And now, of course, uh, we've grown into workforce development for adults. And I was happy mm -hmm. to take on this position. Well, you know, I, I mean, I've been part of the Purple Maya, Purple Prize family for a few years now. And I was always jealous about those computer programs that the kids are going through because I kept on thinking, gee, I'm going to learn that stuff too. And I think I started, you know, like bugging people about like, when are you guys going to have some adult programs? I used to talk to Manu about it. 
and here we are. <laughs> we used to get inquiries from parents all the time who um, said the same thing, right? My child's yeah. getting a great education with you, but what can I do? Exactly. Because we all need to reskill. It's not just for the kids, right? And we all have Absolutely. lots of talents to offer. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the HIAPO program. Um, maybe you want to start with just kind of giving us a general overview of the Purple Maya because HIAPO kind of sits under Purple Maya, yeah? So people have like a context of the different programs you offer. Yeah, it absolutely does. So uh, Purple Maya Foundation is basically a three-prong approach, right? So we've got uh, the Kaikaina program, which uh, you understand to be the youth education and training. Of course, uh, HIAPO, which is the workforce development for adults. And then we have Purple Prize as well, which is um, our community investment arm. So those three divisions uh, mainly make up uh, what is known as Purple Maya Foundation. Okay, so then uh, the HIAPO program then is fairly new, right? I think it mm -hmm. just started like, is it, has it, is it a year old yet or not? Not, quite not even one year old. Wow, baby steps. Uh, so let's talk about that. What what was the seed idea behind this, and why did you land on Salesforce? I mean, there's a lot of tech skills. You know, you, you hear about all the the coding boot camps and things like that. So, what made you uh, decide on Salesforce as the platform to learn? Yeah, well, um, when we decided to do adult training, right, the the opportunity arose that we could help household incomes increase within the state, right? Mm. So there is a brain drain going on uh, in the state. There are plenty of talented individuals here who are just looking for that opportunity. Uh, COVID and everything that it brought with it actually opened opportunities for, for Hawaiians and locals to work remotely in mm. technology. And mm. so Salesforce is perfectly positioned for, to step into that role. Uh, there is a great demand for Salesforce here within the islands, but also internationally. And we are uniquely situated between continental US and Asia uh, to take advantage of the time zones. So, um, you know, we saw a need and we are trying to fill it. Now, Salesforce, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the program is definitely a high demand. Uh, I think one of the things that we meant, uh, you mentioned uh, to us as students is that there's quite a need for Salesforce admins here and locally in Hawaii, but also it seems like worldwide. And especially now with the pandemic and people being able to work remotely, it doesn't even seem like you'd be limited to just your geographical location you could be a Salesforce admin just about anywhere. Um, so the one thing that that's so interesting about the HIAPO program, though, is that you are targeting underserved populations. Can you talk a little bit more about that? And how do you recruit people? Like, what's your mm -hmm. recruitment process? Yeah, so we were very fortunate to be awarded a Native Hawaiian Education Program grant um, mm -hmm. administered through the Department of Education on the federal level. Uh, we have a three-year grant to focus on Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders upskill them, um, mentor them, and get them higher paying jobs. So mm -hmm. our program focuses on that demographic, but we are not limited to just Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. So uh, mm -hmm. we reach out uh, via social media to those uh, communities, um, but whoever's in those communities are also welcome, right? We, we help one house, we help everyone. And are, do you have certain metrics, like in terms of how many students you need to enroll in the program? And then, you know, well, we know enrollments are one thing, but, you know, actual completion and all of that. Uh, are, what type of metrics are you looking at? Yes, yeah, so our program focuses on certifications. Um, mm -hmm. And we find that that typically opens the door for interviews. And then, of course, our apprenticeship and continued support uh, to gain experience is the, probably the most important, right? So we know our graduates are qualified because we've put them through the, the paces, we've given them projects to do, um, and we have found and we've gotten responses back from our employer partners that they are, that their, our graduates are definitely, you know, more than just junior intern level, right? They are ready to work and are eager to do so. Wow, that's impressive. Um, so that was that kind of leads into my question. Uh, so after the training, so the, the, they go through the boot camp, they get their certification, and then 
you do you actually help people find jobs or are they kind of on their own or what does that look like no absolutely we um you know wraparound career services is very much a, a part of what we do so uh once you're a student with us you're a student for life and we will do whatever it takes um, to make you successful or whatever your definition of success is for most mm -hmm. people that is a decent paying job which they can support their family um, hopefully on just one income yeah well <laughs> that's you know it seems like such a high aspiration these days but really that's just basic survival right so uh you know people can do that and the jobs are there that's uh that's pretty no, uh, that's definitely what's needed to help the economy, drive the economy. Now, um, besides Salesforce, um, are you looking at any other types of programs? Like what's the future look like? Because you have a three-year uh, three grant, I guess, right? So are you just going to stick with Salesforce the entire time or are there going to be other offerings? Mm -hmm. uh, there are planned offerings in the future. Uh, we are in discussions um, about maybe a Amazon, AWS, um, some sort of service and or academy. Uh, we're not yet qualified to say we are a partner, but we are working on it. Uh, wow. We're thinking about um, web technologies. There is a demand for web developers. You know, that's, that used to be very popular. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, companies just aren't willing to pay to have an in-house um, web dev team. And so we have heard from the market that they could definitely use a local web developing company uh, so they're not having uh, time differences or communication breakdowns with um, offshore companies as well. So there, there's lots of opportunity and we are trying to you know, fill in the pukas where we can. Wow. So if you were, is, is the web development company, will that be a spinoff from Purple Maya or is that going to, or from the HIAPA program, or is that just going to be their own separate entity? I guess what yeah, I'm right. asking is, are you guys like actually, or I don't know, maybe maybe it's a secret and you don't want to say. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we are a nonprofit uh, yeah. and we are, we do have resources that allow us to, to really attack these problems without the worry of revenue. Um, uh -huh. At some point in the next three years, if we aren't able to obtain more funding, then we may have to think about a different business model for sure. Mm. Yeah, because I was thinking uh, on the side, maybe you could just have these web dev shops or you know other things. Uh, now I know that um, the, uh, the being in Salesforce, I can tell you, it's uh, I you know. I have to say that when I first approached it, I thought, what's the big deal? It's a database, right? Because I've had some exposure to database, but boy, <laughs> it's just a lot more than that. So um, uh, and it certainly made, has made me humble. Um, so I wanted to understand, uh, well, for our, for our listeners, what are the requirements to get into Salesforce? Like, do you have to have some type of background, computer science degree? Like, how do you, how do you get into this? Yeah, so you don't need any of those things. I think having a computer science degree or um, comfort in a digital realm is positive for you, you know, and you're in success in this program for sure. Uh, but I think anyone can do this. Uh, the biggest issue that we have is people actually seeing themselves in this role, right? It's, I know that they're competent. I know they can do it. Um, but there is a mental barrier when you say tech in Hawaii, right? Um, Typically, our, our clientele and our, our, our users uh, don't see themselves in that role. And so it's my job to kind of uh, communicate the correct message and switch mindsets here locally and let them know that, yes, you can do this as well. That kind of goes to another question. As an instructor, do you, how much of your time, I mean, there's obviously the technical skills, right? Mm -hmm. But then, um, it can be frustrating trying to learn the, the platform. And so how much of your time are you spending as an instructor just doing like pep talks or morale boosters or you can do it rah, rah, you know, just trying to, because I'm sure like so many people just feel like, oh my God, I'm just not cut for this, you know, and, and want to drop out. So I was just kind of curious as to how much of your time does that, do you wind up doing some of them in your role? Sure. Yeah, I mean, um, student support is important and I take it very seriously. So I don't measure 
it in exact like percentages of time of my day. Um, I, I do notice that, uh, you know, getting closer to graduation and obviously after graduation, when they're out looking for a job or applying for our apprenticeship, uh, I typically give them more of my time and resources. But uh, it, it's, it's a part of the package, right? The education and training is important, but it's not as important as, you know, building self-esteem, uh, right. building a good work ethic. Those, those are much more valuable. Oh, absolutely. And I think a big part of it, like you said, is the barrier when people think about tech jobs, they just automatically, you know, like, let's say somebody in hospitality that maybe was in a restaurant industry might never see themselves in that role. And a big part of that, I think, is just the identity piece, right? Like they're, where they're able to actually visualize or envision themselves doing this type of work because it's so different from what they've done before. So, um, I think that's such a huge part of it. And I'm uh, just kind of curious as to how are you overcoming that, that barrier of, you know, maybe the identity piece or maybe the, uh, maybe not calling it tech, I don't know, like, uh, or the whole language piece, like what, what are you finding is, is working to tell the, the story a little bit different so that people feel like they can dip their toe in that water? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. So recently, because we, we have addressed, uh, well, I don't know if we've addressed that issue, we did recognize that issue. And mm -hmm. so recently we've um, launched a social media campaign. We just actually ended it this week. Mm -hmm. And we had the Hawaiian students actually tell their own story and oh. um, their own frustrations and what they're going through um, both as a student and as a graduate who is, you know, who got hired on after graduating. You know, what were their frustrations? Uh, what would they tell themselves uh, mm -hmm. if they could speak to themselves six months ago, right? So mm -hmm. I think that's important is having people that look like you, sound like mm -hmm. you, and are from the same neighborhood showing mm -hmm. you what's possible. You know, it, no one listens to me. I'm just a guy, you know, I'm a Hawaiian from a mainland. I grew up a bit different, right? I have um, strong ties here, but uh, as soon as I open my mouth, everyone knows that I wasn't raised here. <laughs> um, so I don't always... I'm not always seen, right, as from the same cloth. But mm -hmm. uh, when, when we show our, our, our students who came from these industries, right, one of our uh, most successful students came from tourism. Um, mm -hmm. Many successful students, you know, I talked about game development before. We have partners that have hired uh, service industry to learn how to make video games. So, yes, oh. we're focused on Salesforce now, but I, I'm telling you, if you have the willingness to learn, anyone can do it. Um, even single moms? Especially single mothers. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It's a bit tougher when you have to watch the little ones, for sure. And you have to yeah. make time to study. And it's, it's definitely grueling. Um, you know, I can put you in contact with some of our graduates and they'll let you know how hard it was. But it mm. was definitely worth it in the end. Yeah. Now, you know, a big part of these boot camps is you, and, and as you said, you know, you're trying to prepare people as much as possible with real life projects and things like that. But a big part of it, I think, is also just kind of getting the practical experience. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the trajectory after the person, the student completes the program, gets a certification? Um, I mean, obviously, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if employers would hire them right off the bat. I, after that, or do they actually have to go and get some practical experience for like a year? Or what does that picture look like? Yeah, so to be fair, you know, our program is not that old, like you said. So mm. we haven't quite proven ourselves. Uh, mm. So, you know, hiring partners don't know yet what to expect. But I will say that those that have hired our graduates, um, they are seeing what they're capable of. They are surprised pleasantly right? Yeah. Um, they may have an intern title, um, but they're, you know, because they're experienced, they, they worked in other industry, they understand mm -hmm. how business works, right? Mm -hmm. In the end, Salesforce is just a system and a platform to uh, create more efficient flows in business. So if you've mm -hmm. ever done business and you understand how it works, um, mm -hmm. then you can do Salesforce, right? Again, it's not code. It's what's called declarative, which is drag and drop, making things happen. Now, the HIAPO program is a bit different, right? So we, we're not just churning um, certifications out. We're not just teaching to the test, so to speak. 
Uh, those mm -hmm. things do exist, right? You give them five days, you study your tail off, and then you pass the exam. And that's mm -hmm. great. But when you go into the interview and the Salesforce, you know, the senior Salesforce manager asks you a Salesforce question or mm -hmm. how you might solve this or, you know, show me how you would build this, they have no clue because they've actually never opened Salesforce. So the mm -hmm. benefits of our program is, you know, personal projects, group projects, collaboration, you know, learning the tools of communication, learning how to conduct yourself within a business in a group, and then getting the hands-on experience. And so our apprenticeship, which is now built for six-month experience, um, really puts our, our apprentices to the, to the test, right? Mm -hmm. So they're working on real-world projects, um, mm -hmm. both nonprofit and for-profit companies that want to utilize our resources. You know, they mm -hmm. contact us and they can hire directly or they can hire through our, um, our nonprofit. Wow, that's excellent. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about the profile for a student. I mean, you're pretty much saying that anybody can try this. Uh, but what kinds of personal qualities would you say the individual needs to have in order to really get through this entire process and get to the other side of this? Mm -hmm. I would say it's the same thing that your high school counselor said, right? Time management organization, mm -hmm. right? Making time to, to do the work and giving mm -hmm. yourself enough space to learn it. Um, mm -hmm. It's very difficult if you're working a 40 hour job and you're a single mother and you wanna do this program, it's a lot. And mm -hmm. so the stress of it um, may, may cause you to break down for sure. Um, but we do have you know, resources, like I said, we have a program to help those that qualify. So if, you know, if you're out of work and you're looking for something, this, this is definitely for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I honestly, I mean, if I was a single mom and working a full-time job, there's no way. <laughs> I'm already stressed out without those things. So, you know, like the other morning, I bolted up at five o'clock in the morning trying to solve one of the problems. So <laughs> I can only imagine, you know, if, the, if any of those other conditions would exist. So uh, if any there are single moms that I know have gone through this program and I bow down to them because I know this is really, really tough and that takes a lot of grit. So um, now one of the things uh, I wanted to talk about, we have uh, getting close to our time, but maybe I have about five more minutes with you is um, the, the labor market that exists in Hawaii are there, we know that there's Salesforce positions all over the world, but what does the labor market look like here? Uh, are there a lot of companies that are using Salesforce? And if so, like what types of industries have you seen? Maybe? Sure. Uh, there are many organizations here locally that are using Salesforce. Uh, at the mm -hmm. top of my head, it's probably over 200. Um, and some of those are quite large, right? So banks, airlines, um, you know, vehicle distribution companies, uh, governments, right? So there's a lot of opportunity. Um, because our market for, for this particular niche was so, you know, underserved, there is a tendency to go outside and look for talent. And so mm -hmm. we, that's what we're trying to solve for, right? We have talent here, right? Mm -hmm. we, we have support because Purple Maya and Hiapo is here to support them in whatever they need to, to get accomplished. And so before you look elsewhere, look here first. And, you know, the best case scenario is that we saturate this market and force Hawaiians to go out and find contracts elsewhere, right? Let's bring money from the mainland here. Let's bring mm -hmm. funds from Asia here. Mm -hmm. That's the dream. That's a great aspiration. <laughs> uh, now, you said that you've already established partnerships with some of the employers. Mm -hmm. um, the... Uh, so these partnerships, are they partnerships so that they could potentially hire the students that are coming out of the HIAPO program? Yeah, so as you can imagine, right, we are turning talented, um, hungry professionals, and mm -hmm. companies are interested in hiring them. Uh, mm -hmm. Not every company needs a certified admin right now, um, mm -hmm. but some companies are willing to train for the position that they're looking for. So having Salesforce experience is a plus, um, uh -huh. but I, you know, I've heard as desperate as just send me anyone who you think would be good and we'll train them in Salesforce. I oh. have to uh, remind them that that's 
not what we do. <laughs> we sent them trained already to you. And if you want to give them additional resources and education and training, that'd be great. And do you find that the employers are open to that concept? Oh, yeah. So, um, so far, so good. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there will be a time, you know, uh, you asked me before, you know, what are our, what's our, our KPIs, our, our quotas, our numbers that we're supposed to uh, be doing to adhere to our grants. And it, it's, it's, it's uh, large on the scale of what the ecosystem in Hawaii is now, right? So mm -hmm. if we're graduating 40 students a year and we're pushing 30 of them to get certified, that's, uh, you know, that's double the market every year. Um, and so there will be a point where it, there's too many qualified individuals. Um, and so, the, again, that's probably when we'll start focusing on other uh, complementary services or instead of going wider, we go deeper with stronger, uh, you know, Salesforce developer certifications, architect solutions. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the ecosystem is quite large. Now, we all know that COVID has forced some major changes in a lot of our business models. So I was curious to find out uh, what impact COVID has had on the program. Yeah, well, this was supposed to be uh, in class, right? With laptops that we provide. And, um, you know, we were gonna try to get people to come into town into our location and actually do it together as a group. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously, we are all leaning on Zoom these days or, uh, or Teams or whatever you're using. Uh, mm -hmm. So everything is done digitally, which has its challenges for sure. Um, you know, not everyone has high speed internet at home. Not everyone has a, a decent laptop to do the things that are necessary to be successful. So we do try to, you know, lend out our resources or help out in any way that we can. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging. Now, um, to answer your question specifically, though, COVID has actually made it more possible for us to teach this course, I think, because um, maybe qualified individuals wouldn't have even thought of it because they were working and still doing their job. Maybe it was unhappily, but it was still a paycheck that they could count on and they didn't have time or energy to pursue another uh, mm -hmm. career. Um, but now, now's the time. And so we're able to reach folks that we might not have been. Wow. Well, you know, that's, uh, there's always a, a silver lining to, to some of the worst problems that we've had. So that's certainly a good one. Um, so we're, we're going to need to wrap it up. And I wanted to let people know how they can get uh, in touch with you or with the program. What, what's the best uh, place to go to get more information? Yeah, definitely check out our website, purplemaya.org. Uh, there is, uh, you can do slash Yapo and it goes right into our Salesforce training website. Um, you can apply. We have three programs. Um, there's a three week introduction. So you can learn about Salesforce without committing the full three months that we require later. And then after our 12 week intensive, you can apply for our apprenticeship. Uh, mm -hmm. Applications are open now. So check out the website or you can email me at kahi, K-E-A-H-I at purplemaya.org. Or you can give me a call on my cell phone, 808-728-9918. Oh, boy. Your phone's going to be off the hook now. Awesome. <laughs> well, Keahi, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you telling us more about the program. And if anybody is thinking about joining this, I would say that this is one of the best investments you can probably make. Um, it's been a wild journey for me. I'm still in the middle of it. And I can tell you that there's times when I started wondering if I was cut out for this, but it, um, it teaches you so much perseverance, grit, everything. So it's a great program and I highly encourage you to go and check it out at purplemaya.org. And, uh, thank you all for being here and for checking out this new program in Hawaii. And check back for our next show on Wednesday, March 10th at 3 p.m. Until next time, please be safe and take care of one another. Aloha.